Hall of the Sea. Bartholomew has information that may be of interest to you. Awesome. And with that, we are officially out of the tutorial quest, baby. Woohoo! This is the first actual quest of the main game because all three of the quests will effectively lead, all three of the uh, main stories will lead to this one. Call of the Sea is the first quest of the actual main story. We are finally out of the tutorial. Ah, my Lord Envoy, I trust your, stray, your stay in the Sultana has been pleasant. Now, if you don't mind my asking, do you perchance have plans to visit Limsa Laminsa in the near future? If so, I have information that may be of interest to you. I once accompanied the Flame General on an official visit to the seaside city-state, during which time I became acquainted with Batteron, the proprietor of the Charning Wench. Well, the man sent word just now that he has a job for a capable adventurer. I can think of none with better credentials than you. Batteron would doubtless be pleased were you to offer him your services. Ah, let's go bug Batteron. Yep. This is actually a really easy quest. It's literally... Because this quest can happen in three different places, it's literally just, okay, get you back to Lamensa, And we can do that, no problem. Sure, I'll burn an Aetherite ticket on this one for good measure. It means I don't have to tap into my small pile of gill. <laughs> hey, Batteron, it's like I just left, you know, only a few minutes ago. Welcome to the, welcome to the Drowning Ranch. Sit wherever you like, mate. I'll be with you in a... Well, well, if it ain't the one and only Decamon, let's play. I was told a distinguished adventure might be reporting for duty. Fancy that adventure being you, eh? Just so you're fairly warned, though, this ain't no job for the faint of heart. Things are liable to get downright bleeding airy. But if you think you're still interested, let me know and I'll fill you in on the details. Yes, please. I will take all the details. It's, pop it's probably pirates. <laughs> oh, it's probably pirates, huh? I thank you for taking the time to help me out. Now I'm sure you're busy, so I'll come straight to the point. Word has it some suspicious looking buggers have been sneaking in and out of the Sestasha Sagra, and I need a trustworthy sort to head, up, to head up north at Aleport and find out who they are and what they're up to. Don't sound like much, I know. But since that nasty business over in Swift Perch, folk have been a bit uneasy. Well, I say a bit. Tis all they can do not to soil themselves every time the bloody floorboards creak. If you would permit me... If you would permit me, Master Baderon, I should be happy to elaborate. Oh, hey, Rainer. Well, well, if it ain't the Chief Yellow Jacket himself, to what do I owe this rare honor, Commodore Rainer? Come to make sure me patrons are behaving, or just thirsty? Eh, yeah, why not? A bit of both. Neither, in fact. I came to welcome Dekuan back to Limsa Lamitsa. It is well you have returned. Over the course of the past moon, there have been several sightings of an unfamiliar vessel off the coast of Aleport, in the vicinity of the Isles of Umbra. This information came to my attention no more than a few weeks after a squad of my own soldiers had completed a routine patrol of the region, the Sestasha Sea Grot included. Their search revealed little, save that a family of corals had taken up residence in the caves. Nothing to concern us, in short. In light of recent developments, however, it would seem wise to search Sestasha again. But with the Sahagin testing our defenses daily, I am loath to assign the task to the limited forces at my disposal. Our line is stretched as it is. Thus I sought the services of a competent adventurer to conduct an investigation in our stead. Any aid you can offer in this matter would be greatly appreciated. Well, good sir, I my schedule is relatively open. Then it is settled. Sestasha is located in western Lanosha. For more detailed instructions on how to reach the place, I suggest you consult... God damn, these Rotogai names are terrible. Vimelpa. She can be found at the ferry docks on the lower decks. You are the man. Good luck to you, lad. Ah, uh, and we're off to the races. And what would a main story quest be without a lot of people that are talking to me rising to the challenge? Oh, oh! I need to do this one because uh, this is important. Rising to the challenge. We all know how it feels to have. We all know how it feels to have one too many. That's why I'll not fault our patrons for much of what goes on at our tables. But is it too much to ask that they keep their belongings on their person when they leave? Wouldn't bother me so much if half of them didn't show up a week later, ranting and raving as if their drunken heedlessness were somehow my fault. I'm just the one that poured all the drinks for them and spiked them. 
Take this impressive looking journal right here. As oft used as it seems to be, I have no doubt its owner is tearing up the town searching for his prized possession. Here, you can have it. I don't want it anymore. A stranger he was. A swarthy rhodogyne who enjoyed his drink. Seemed to be getting on well with one of our regulars. Quintanarian. Perhaps you could still catch up with him and spare me the headache. I'd offer you a free drink, but last time I did that batter and docked my wages. Uh Well, the reason I'm knocking... I want to do this one really quick. Beauty is only scalpy. That's the beauty guy. The reason I want to do this one is because this actually unlocks a very handy thing to have around. Have I seen who? Look, just because I spend more nights at the wench than in my own home doesn't mean I'm mates with every side who comes stumbling through the doors. Wait a minute. That bloody book! Why didn't you say so sooner? A Tyler's bastard drained 20 flagons and promptly passed out. Leaving yours truly to foot the bill. Said he was heading for Aleport. Now where else the scurvy sop? Namella Willen. He's still stranded at the ferry docks. But the gods know it won't help him get Bill back. At the Lamentson Ferry Docks. Well, that's pretty much where I'm going anyway, so it's rather convenient. Ah, there's our scurvy Rodegine. If you have business with me, be quick about it. My ferry and my next great adventure await. Dude, this is yours. Like, seriously, this is yours. My journal. Well, I thought I'd lost it forever. Pardon my rudeness, friend. Perhaps I should have stopped after 19 flagons. <laughs> Did you steal a glance at his pages, perchance? No? A shame that. For this book contains... How might I say it? A record of my numerous adventures. Quite the inspiring read, if I do say so myself. Which I believe I just did. <laughs> You've the air of an adventure about you. One still untested. But take heart. Even the most accomplished adventurer, and I speak from personal experience, was once a whelp with more dreams than sense. Were there only some way for me to repay your- But of course! I have a fresh journal right here that might as well have your name on it. Why not keep a record of your own? That one day we might regale each other with stories of our deeds. And with that, I shall be off for adventure. And a flagon or twenty of the realm's finest ale calls me. Fare you well on your journey, and next time you find yourself at the wench, do thank that Ellison fellow for his generosity. Ha <laughs> ha! You bastard. I'll take the uh, ten pieces, I'll take the free gold. But the important thing this is going to give me is the challenge log. This is a really, really good way to get experience in gold. It's really handy. It resets every week on Tuesday at about 7 o'clock local time or 4 o'clock local time. I'm not sure which. But anyway, this thing down here, handy dandy way to get some free cheap experience doing various things. And it does scale with level, so... While those totals it looked like it was giving now were pretty paltry, they will get better as the game goes on. You hear about Commodore Rainer's investigation? Then you'll want to board a ferry bound for Aleport. I apologize, I called you a Rotogine. You're a Mikote. Once you arrive in Western Lenosia, though, you'd best pay a visit to the Hall of the Novice before you blunder into Sestasha. The Adventurer's Guild runs the Hall, and the folk there will prepare you. Train you with the skills you'll need to face the dangers undoubtedly waiting for you in the Sea Grot. The hall's on the way to Sestasha, just north of Aleport. Head inside and one of their seasoned adventures will take you in hand. Best of luck to you, friend. Ah, ha, ha. Speak with the seasoned adventurer at the Hall of the Novice. Well, I might as well take this all the way to Aleport. Honestly, the ferry here is a little cheaper than me taking the Aetherite. The Aetherites are the most expensive form of travel. But honestly, they're at by the time you uh, you're even just in your thirties, you're gonna have thousands and thousands of gill, and the couple hundred that you're gonna be spending on things like this really don't mean much. It's interesting. They actually, as part of the quest, they're sending you to the Hall of the Novice. Ah, you must be the adventurer of whom the Yellow Jacket sent word. I hear you are brave, and you are to brave the depths of the Sestasha Sea Grot. The occupants of those caves are rumored to be as numerous as they are bloodthirsty. No matter what the epic tales would have you believe, strolling into such a den of savagery alone would be the height of foolishness. No, you shall need companions. And you shall need the training we here at the Hall of the Novice can provide. Well, I have already had that training, if you couldn't tell by the outfit I'm wearing. 
I strongly suggest that you study the fundamentals of group combat before continuing on your mission. The smith here oversees the training schedules. Speak with him, and you can register for exercises tailored to your particular field of expertise. And he's like, ah, yeah, me, me, speak to me. When you have mastered all that our masters have to teach, then it will be time to head north once more. Report to the Yellow Jacket Scout at the mouth of the Sestasha Sea Grot, and he will furnish you with the details of your duty. Ah, well, thankfully for me, I have already run all of the courses for that. I'm wearing the outfit. I'm wearing the ring even. So let's just go straight on to Sestasha. Please tell me you're here on Yellow Jacket duty and not some daft sod out on a stroll. I can't take any more of this blasted waiting. Y you are? Oh, thank God. It's boring as hell out here. I assume you already know about the ship seen slipping around the Isles of Umbra. We've been on the lookout for pirate activity ever since that vessel was sighted, thinking a crew of cutthroats might have a den nearby. So when we received word that men of questionable quality have been seen passing in and out of Sestasha here, we weren't entirely surprised. I've yet to see them for myself, but if this lot belongs to those fishback fancying serpent reavers, well, you can imagine the panic it'll cause. The kidnappings are still fresh in people's mind. Anyway, your task is to poke around in the caves and find out exactly who we're dealing with. While you do that, I'll be keeping watch out here. Praying you don't spot any blue face tattoos. Use the duty finder to enter Sestasha. That's right. We now officially have the duty finder. Sestasha now available. The duty finder has a new regular duty. So the duty finder instance raids. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the duty finder is how you basically get in and out of basically all instances in the game. Yeah, I know how the duty finder works, thank you. It's pretty simple. You just pick the duty you want from the various categories, and as you can see, we have plenty of categories to choose from. And all of one thing to pick at the moment, because that's as far as we've gotten. Anyway, the description for Sestash is pretty simple. After a period of relative silence following the calamity, the Serpent Reavers have once again taken to terrorizing the inland hamlets of Lanosia, killing the men, kidnapping the women and children, plundering the storehouses, and burning what they, little they leave behind. For years, it was not known how the pirates were able to raid these areas so far from the coast, until a local shepherd sighted a band of painted ruffians entering the Sestasha Sea Grot, carrying large quantities of sacks and crates. Could it be that there is more to this cave than meets the eye? Pretty simple. We have a 90 minute time limit. Nowhere near going to take that much. Basically, the game also says I must be level 15. And if I'm over level 18, I will be down synced. And now we wait the requisite six minutes. Don't worry, you guys won't have to wait anywhere near that long for me. Oh yeah, there are definitely pirates here. There's a lot of pirates here. Ah. Sestasha, the very first dungeon of the game. And I half bet that the other three have already run along ahead of me, knowing my luck. Wouldn't surprise me. Yep, there they go. They're already running off. <sighs> you know, there's never any patience around here. Just everyone rushes right ahead. Yeah, I know. Now that we're in a party, I know what joining a party does. Now that we're in a party, we now, or at least a party of at least four, we now have access to limit breaks, which are really, really cool super attacks. Now, because there's only four of us, we can only hit a level one limit break, and we are all rocking that new belief. Wow. Yeah, one person has their actual job. Wow. So you may be noticing, but dungeon mobs are an obscenely high, like, what's the best way to put this? Uh, they hit a lot harder and they have a huge health pool compared to overworld mobs at the same level. Like, level 15 guys, I can solo kill those things without any trouble. But the four of us are having a hell of a time at this point taking these guys on. And hello, what's this? You find a bloodstained scrap of parchment with a message scrawled upon it in faded ink. The captain likes his cabbage green. Now, 
This message actually has three different varieties, and they didn't wait for me, of course not. No big surprise. <laughs> uh, no big surprise that they didn't wait on me. I'm really not. Oh, I need my pet. I just realized I need my pet out badly. Ah. Uh, but that message is actually the solution to a, uh, a very minor puzzle that comes up in the next uh, couple minutes. I'll try to keep my camera zoomed out. I'll tr I'm probably gonna keep the dungeons as unedited as possible. Just so people can, uh actually see um, how this is going. Oh, someone's actually asking. Um, since I'm, uh, I do have a thing that says basically uh, whenever I'm in an instance, I, I post and let them know they're all actually just now starring in an LP. So say hi to our other three party members. <laughs> uh, give me a second. I will be doing a bit of typing here. I'm getting left behind because I'm too busy typing out responses to questions. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, they're already taking out everything around here. Huh. I just realized I'm actually, uh, so over... <laughs> cool, if I'm in a video, I'll come watch. I might actually let the... I might actually let that show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure I'll be running, uh, a lot of content with a lot of random people, which is fine. You never know. I might run into you guys again at some point. If you guys are leveling along the same times I am, it's actually quite possible. I'm not gonna waste dots on these guys. If anything, I should be blasting them a downburst. Or I would. But, uh, I can't actually access it. Which is so annoying. Oh, invulnerable. And these giant clams are the things that are spawning the little Shade Seekers. And whenever they close their, uh... Close the clam shells, they are invulnerable. Which makes for some minor annoyances. I'm actually surprised I can't use, uh... There's Downburst. I was like, why can't you let me use Downburst? Weird it wasn't letting me use it. Now I feel bad for- Hey, I'm level 18! I now have access to Fester. <laughs> I also actually now have access, you'll see it next to the uh, enemy gauge up there. I have a new thing called the Aether Flow Gauge, which basically measures energy drain. So I can do this, and boom, I now have access to, to Aether Flow. And this has like a 30 second cooldown. Should use it whenever it's up. No reason not to. AOE these guys, because I can. Now Fester's a handy little ability. I'll actually do the mouse over really quick and show you guys what it is while I'm little beating these guys. It basically punishes enemies for having extra, for having my dots on them. So th if I have both my dots on them, it hits a lot harder than than if I didn't. But uh, I'm not gonna dot up the Shade Seekers. There's really no point to it. What I want is that clam. Oh, somebody, something targeted me. One downside to being a caster is it's really hard to hit things in these low-level areas. It's weird, I can't use this. It's like my pet doesn't know what it wants to do. It's on guard for some reason. And, uh... And he pushes the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, if you push the wrong button, you get a free mob. If 
we push the green button, however, which was what was on the note, we get an inconspicuous switch, and that gives us the first boss. Yeah, you know, as soon as somebody decides to poke the damn thing, there it is! There's our first boss, Chopper. Really nothing special to him. He's very easy. He literally only has one attack. Ah, Fester's got a bit of a longer cooldown than I'd expect. <laughs> uh, why did I have to have the dumbest glam when I'm going to be in a video? Sorry, man, but you never know when you're going to run into somebody recording. Uh, I mean, like, literally, see, these guys have no real mechanic. He, the only fight mechanic he has is that point blank AoE. There's nothing to him. And dead. But then again, whenever you beat a boss, you get some loot. And loot rules in this game are pretty simple. If it's of your class, you can roll Need on it, and you get priority. If not, you can roll Greed on it. Or you can do what I'm going to do and just pass. Ah, anytime you see a purple gate like this, that means you're going into a boss room. Now this dungeon is kind of an oddball. How did you find this place? In that it technically has four boss fights, which is unusual. As most dungeons will have three boss fights. This one is a bit of an oddball in that case, because it does have four. But the second and third ones are pretty much identical. Oh, and that sound means we have a limit break. And I'm sorely tempted to blast this guy in the face with it. Nah, let's not. Let's save it. But I will energy drain him. Hit him up with the old dots. Captain Strong! Captain Strong! Quick! Yeah, it's hard to tell, but he actually has a pet parrot. And there he goes, running like a little bitch. Ah. And a, that is a Lancer weapon, which uh, means it's really not that useful for me. So I'll let the rest of the guys have that one. Ooh, we have a big pack of guys here. That is a lot of dudes. Here. Have some Fester. Have some Uncle Fester. And then take a double down burst. Just so we get some AoE damage on you guys. It's not much. But it's literally the only AoE I have. Like literally it's the only AoE I have. And then I'll tag you with some Festa. Dot the other guy up. And Fester his ass. Because I can. And because it's actually reasonably efficient. And as you can see already, just even at level 15, or I should say level 18, the combat is starting to get a little more interesting. Because now I've got instant cast abilities, I've got things with long cooldowns, I've got AoEs. And although the dungeon mobs themselves are relatively simple, we are going to start seeing ones with big mechanics before too long. There goes all my uh, Aether Flow charges. So I can basically do two Festers every 30 seconds as long as I have something to energy drain. And having something to energy drain is pretty common because it's literally just any enemy. And hello, one of those guys was nice enough to drop us a key to the captain's quarters. Ah, I remember this guy. This guy's actually pretty beefy. Now granted there's four of us beating on him. But even then, like, you've watched me smoke overworld mobs in less casts than it's going to take us to take him down before this. And this is after I got a fancy new toy to play with. Because look at that, Fester does about 100 damage. And there we go. A Waverider gate key. So, if you haven't noticed, 
A standard light party like this consists of two DPS, that would be me and the other guy's currently an archer, a healer, who in this case is currently being played by a scholar, you know, very handy because that's actually one of the classes I can turn into from this, and our tank is being played by a gladiator. Now apart from the scholar, all of us are still in our pre-30 classes, which means these guys are all relatively low level. But uh, if you notice, uh, next to the tank and healer, they have this little symbol that I'm pointing out. That's the level sync icon. That's how I know these guys are at least past level 18. And you can see they've all been down synced to level 18. In fact, odds are good before we hit the end of this dungeon, I'm going to go over level 18. Ah, Captain Round 2. Give you some Uncle Fester. Take out these minions. Double down burst these guys. There we go. That takes care of him. Eh, I'll save Uncle Fester. This guy's about to go down anyway. Might as well save that for the big guy here. There we go. Oh, you didn't like that, did you? That was good damage. Oh, that's really good damage. Hits you with some energy drain, which again, doesn't do a whole lot, but it does let me recharge faster. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. Oh. And unfortunately I blew my only AOE. Yeah, the second fight, it's basically the same as the first. He just summons a small pack of scurvy dogs when he gets low. And then he runs away like a little bitch again. And this time we've picked up a shield, which is really only useful for gladiators because they're literally the only class that can use shields. <laughs> ah, we're almost to the end. This is the last big room of the dungeon. Hit you guys with some uh, downburst. Uh-oh. Oh! Oh! Our tank's getting ballsy here! Our tank is getting ballsy, he just pulled a second pack. And at low level, that's pretty damn risky, so we're gonna have to actually work for this. Ooh, I might actually uh, give him a supporting heal here. Just because I don't want our tank to go down, because trust me, if he goes down, we are definitely not long for the world. Whew, okay, looks like we got it mostly under control. So I haven't pointed this out, but you can see on the enemy list. Now, normally when I'm in the overworld, that crystal that's next to the enemy name is a bright red square, but right now it's a green circle. Well, it was a green circle, now it's just gone because all the enemies are dead. But that crystal basically shows how much threat I am to that given enemy. And it goes from green to yellow to orange and then finally to red and red being you are the main target. Now, if you are a tank, you want to see all red. And since I'm not a tank, I really don't want to see any red. I doubt I can do enough AoE to actually piss off these guys cuz uh, he's actually got the tank actually has a good AoE attack at this level that he can just spam as much as he wants. Oh, he is really going ham here. Oh, and you, that, you heard that ding? And you saw the scurvy dog symbol change? That's when I pissed something off before the tank was able to get a hold of it. Oh, I don't have any real AoEs for this man. Downburst is all I've got, and uh, it's got kind of a long charge. Although, thankfully, the, uh, the pet seems to be doing a decent job of just AoEing on its own. Hey! I have been level synced because I am now level 19. I need to target something that actually has some HP. Otherwise, I'm basically wasting casts. Just let the pet do all the uh, AoE damage. The pet and the tank. So with that, we have reached the final boss of Sestasha, which really isn't all that impressive. I'll be, I'll be honest. Hish, you silly spawning ground, Shulwaka! Oh, Jesus! Well, so much for that, Captain. <laughs> yep, our first Sahagin! Hish, finless fools! 
The Lord of the Hall shall suck upon your souls. If we're lucky, we can build. Ah! So they want us to LB right at the beginning. Which uh, I have no problem with because uh, that means I get to show off the Sky Shard. That's the level one caster limit break. And I say caster limit break because each um, type of DPS has their own limit break. And for us, us casters, it's a big circle AOE. For ranged DPS like the Archer there, he would have a line AOE, which would probably have been better because he would do more damage. And then lastly, for a melee, it's a big single target attack, which does the most damage of the three. Now, this guy actually does have a mechanic. He has one mechanic, and you can see it over there off to the side. It's these unnatural ripples. Uh, you're meant to interact with them. Because if you don't do it in time, yep, an enemy approaches, see how they start spawning Sahagin ads. But as you can also see, we have literally just burnt this guy to a crisp. We have utterly destroyed this guy before his mechanic even mattered. <laughs> and there we are, our first dungeons in the clear. <laughs> ah, and lastly, of course, in addition to some free loot, you can hand out commendations. You can hand out one to any player who is in the group, as long as they don't leave before all the loot gets rolled on. And that would be another melee class armor, so we're just going to pass on that, and that's perfectly fine. Well, guys, it's been fun. See you later. And now it's back to Batteron, the Drowning Wench. No problem. I could easily use my return ability because my home point is still set to Limsa. And all of a sudden, I'm level 19. Now you may have noticed this already, but I didn't point it out and I should have. But mobs in dungeons grant obscene amounts of experience points when compared to mobs in the overworld. Like the guys in the overworld might drop like say 60 to 80 XP at level 15, guys are the same level that we were murdering. Oh, let's see, they were doing uh, about 1400 experience points. I mean, granted that's with all my bonuses, but still, that's nothing to sneeze at. When I need 51,000 to get to the next level and one enemy kill gives us like 14,000 or 1400. You know, I'll get there in no time. Okay, batter on. Let's turn in what we got. Ah, such a task was on the books. Was mine. I'm afraid that ship has already sailed, friend. Let me guess, you're talking about the Sestasha thing. Dolores Bear. Ah, might you be the adventurer who accepted the job of investigating Sestasha? I just, I indeed I am, and I'm reporting back in. Huh. <laughs> It would seem that ship has not only sailed, but now returns to harbor, none the worse for its voyage. A pity. We dragged our boots too long on this one. No matter. The wheel will turn and our chance will come. You're right, of course. But there shall be no rest till we have attained our goal, lofty though it may be. Not a wink of sleep, great leader. Our aim, lest you wonder, is to perform such feats of heroism as will earn us a place in the songs of every alehouse in Eorzea. We mean to write a legend which will inspire adventurers as yet unbored to follow our shining example. Do you have such a goal? Large or small, it matters not. Only have a star to reach for, and you will reach higher. Purpose can sustain you through times of hardship. Keep your eye on the prize, and all obstacles will be overcome in time. You would not think to stride into battle unclad, would you? Well, goals are as arms and armor for the spirit. I wish you fortune in your endeavors, sir. Well, shit. Now we gotta go find something else to do. See ya. You're kinda cute, actually. The hell were they? Back then, are ya? With all your limbs and a tail to tell, I'll wager. Oh, have I got a tail for you. Fishbacks. And there I was thinking you'd only have to crack a pirate skull or three. Seven hails. 
You turn your back for five bloody minutes, and the scaly bastards have set up shop on your bleeding doorstep. Still, sounds like you left them in pieces, so I don't suppose they'll be carrying out whatever mischief they was planning. Unless they was planning on feeding themselves to the fauna of Sestasha, of course. Hehe. <laughs> Any road, all's well that ends well. Thanks for shedding some light on this mystery. I knew you'd get the job done, lad. You always do. Now, I bet you're dying for a rest, but just in case you're not, I was wondering if you might be interested in taking on another job. Just so happens that I've had a request from our sister guild, Gridania, see? Seems the forest folk are in need of a venture what can get things done. For them to ask for help like this, you can bet the task won't be no skip through a sunny glade. But after the way you dealt with our fishback infestation, I doubt it's anything you can't handle. Give us a shout when you're ready, and I'll lay her out for you. Why, sure! And with that, we are really into the main story. Party Finder unlocked. Awesome! I was wondering when I was going to get access to that. So the Party Finder, and I should pull this up and point it out just so we can see it. Uh, that would be this right here. The Party Finder is a handy dandy way to find parties across not only our server but all servers on our data cluster looking for various things you can put up specifically things you want to look at like say a specific dungeon a specific trial raids high-end duty or whatever you're looking for just boom also a lot of people will use this for like say uh advertising for omni crafters or rp or for your companies looking for people or uh let's say static raids looking for people daily reminder to stay hydrated <laughs> oh i like that that's cute uh 